Hey everyone, I hope you're having a great day. Today I'm gonna show you how I made Scubatography, a game about a scuba diver taking pictures of the various sea life. This one was made for yet another game jam. Yep, I hope you aren't tired of those. This year, instead of joining the Game Maker Toolkit game jam, I joined the Major Jam 6. If you're watching this, you already know what a game jam is. Competition, make game, short amount of time, no sleep, cry in the shower. All of these are required in a game jam. This time, the theme was life, and the limitation was that my game had to have multiple applications. Now, when I saw this, I didn't know what the hell I was gonna do. One of the first things I thought was to make a multiplayer game, because, you know, multiple computers means more than one application, right? But I quickly realized that I wasn't going to have time to add multiplayer in one week. Eventually, I thought about making a game that has you exploring the ocean full of different creatures, and you have a phone that has some applications that will help you find them. So I started making the player move around, and this time things are slightly different, because you are actually swimming instead of walking. This means that you can go upwards, downwards, sideways, you name it, this is freaking crazy! I also added the ability to dash, and to jump, which gives you a little up boost. Now that this is done, let's make a better map for you to swim around. I found this very cool assets pack online that I immediately stole, I mean downloaded, and I scattered some of these objects around the floor and in the air just to see if everything was working fine. Huh, this fish has some of its parts missing, it's probably not important. With some exceptions, the assets were great, so let's add a more interesting floor. I watched 2 or 3 Becky's tutorials on how to make a terrain generator, and wait, you're definitely gonna love this. Get ready? I made a freaking triangle, let's go! And that's not all, I have something even better. Get ready again? It's a perfect square, oh my god, how does it do it? And after a few minutes of hyping myself up, I also had multiple squares. To finish it off, if I add random heights to the vertices of the squares, I get a floor with small cliffs and valleys. Yeah, you guys probably lost your minds right now, so let's relax a little bit and let ChatGPT do some of the work for us. I asked it to write a script that could randomly spawn objects on the ground, so that every time you play you would get a totally different world. And ChatGPT is a professional AI that has infinite knowledge, so I'm pretty sure he's gonna get this on the first try. Well, I guess not then. Ok, so we might be facing some technical difficulties here, I don't know how long this is gonna take but oh! It's already working. Ok then, I guess you can start spawning some animals and oh my god, what is happening here? Wait, I can't show this, oh no! Now let's make them move around. If the creatures are always swimming, they'll eventually get stuck in the walls of the map, so to prevent this, I added invisible lines in front of them, called raycasts, and as you can see, if it collides with a wall, the creature just starts swimming the other way around. And the raycasts always detect any type of collision, so there's no way they'll get stuck in the walls, and they got stuck in the walls. Why am I not surprised? And here comes another one. Oh god damn it. After fixing that, the animals are finally working. Most of the time. This is great progress, but you still need to make the main mechanic of the game, which is the camera. I want you to be able to take pictures of the animals, so I followed this helpful tutorial on how to make a camera system, and after some tries, I have the camera somewhat working. Uh, let's just clear that, and we have a camera! We also seem to be ahead of schedule somehow, so let's take a break and add some polish. No, not that polish, this polish. I made these cool bubble particles for the map using Unity's particle system, and after tweaking some of the values, we now have a more believable ocean. Day 3 was a very long day, I'll spare you the details, but basically I spent the entire day just trying to make the camera system actually working. I want the player to take at least one picture of every species, so I made a counter that decreases every time you take a picture of a new animal, and when it reaches zero, you win! I also added sound effects for some of the animals, and to be honest, I don't know what I'm doing. I literally just used the sound effect from Sue's bell in Gravity Falls. Nah, my stomach normally sounds like whale noises. I started the next day by improving the camera a little bit. Now, when you take a picture, it shows the name of the animal and how many species are left in the ground and swimming around. Then I started working on the applications. I added this phone that tells you the list of apps you have. Number 1 is for the camera, number 2 is for your checklist, so when you take a picture, a check appears next to the name of the animal. 
and number 3 is for the flashlight. Now wait, what the hell is this place I'm entering? Well, this is one of the caves that I made for you to explore, and it will have its own unique species like Mr. Krabs, Larry the Lobster, and uh... Mr. Seaweed. Yeah, that makes sense. The next day was weird, I'm not gonna lie. I wanted the fourth app to enable X-ray vision, so you could see some animals hiding around, but I started having many problems with the shaders. I don't know why everything's pink and this ground is blue, I'm just very confused. I think this game wants to see the Barbie movie for some reason. So I had to change my plans. Instead of doing X-ray vision, I added a simple pickup system that lets you pick up rocks and see what's underneath. Oh, look at that! It's a subscribe button! What a coincidence! I was gonna ask you to subscribe right now! Sorry, I had to do it. I also finished some of the menus and added a pause screen. Now, there was only one thing left to do, which was an intro cutscene. I've never used Unity's timeline, so I had to learn a few new things. I wasn't really understanding these graphs down here, you can see that in this clip. Helicopter, helicopter. But after a while, I had a simple cutscene done. And my game is also done, so I just have to do a few quick changes, like tweaking the volume of the dolphin, and then I published everything on itch.io with a few hours to spare. So, go play it right now if you're interested. I learned a lot while making this game, it's crazy how much you can learn in a single week. Here's just a list of some of the things I learned. To finish this off, I just wanted to say that I have finally been working on my horror game and I'm making some genuine progress, so if you want to see more, you can follow me on Instagram, Facebook and X. What a weird name. And also follow me on TikTok and YouTube Shorts. Okay, bye!